This video will answer one simple question. How is Uzbekistan handling the coronavirus outbreak? Well, while there might be an outbreak in the world in general, in Uzbekistan specifically, there is not quite the outbreak, although the first cases have recently sparked. Namely, a family that came from an infested country such as France or Turkey. Turns out that the whole family, if the memory is correct, is all infected with the coronavirus. There's probably at least one other individual case. No, most likely these people were halted at the airport, quarantined and hopefully treated for a full recovery as we would not like to lose any Uzbeks in the year 2020 due to this unfortunate virus. Could there be other cases in this country that are not reported due to corruption or due to simply not finding those cases? Of course it is very likely. Not only is it likely in Uzbekistan, it could be likely in any other part of the world. However, we would raise more questions when it comes to countries that are quote-unquote notable for having corruption. While we would not like to point any specific fingers on Uzbekistan, Central Asia has been plagued for a very long time by dictatorships, poor economies and the C word that was used a few moments ago quite liberally, corruption. As you can see, one would not guess that there is a viral outbreak that has infiltrated the Uzbek territories on this beautiful Tashkent day. Now the spring is slowly approaching, in fact, the Navruz celebration was quite nigh. However, it was cancelled due to such celebrations usually involving people being in close proximity to each other. And being in close proximity in such dire circumstances would most likely spread this virus in an undesirable way. Now what has opened and what has closed in Uzbekistan due to the insurgents? As far as the average tourist, nothing has closed. Probably because there are around 10 or less cases in this blessed nation that were reported. However, only a few weeks ago, in Italy, there were hundreds of cases that are now multiples of thousands. And so this situation could be out of hand at any moment and people need to take their precautions. Perhaps the first day that the news of the Uzbek infection surfaced, masks were quite prevalent on the streets. However, even though more cases have rise, people have quickly gotten used to the fact that there is a virus in this country, and so they don't seem to give a flying rat. However, of course, people are still likely taking their precautions and Masks have not completely disappeared off the premises. For example, at supermarkets, it would be a very common sighting to see cashiers with face masks, people doing stocking, handling products, shelving them, itako dalie. That is uh, even sometimes something that we see even when there is not an outbreak because still. They are most likely dealing with products that have been who knows where and could potentially have other germs that are exclusive of the coronavirus. In addition, if you find yourself in one of this blessed nation's blessed hotels, you would most likely notice that housekeeping also has a mask. Besides the fact that toilets, for example, hold a lot of germs and housekeepers and house cleaners have to most likely take care of those nasty toilet bowls. Here we got an Asian looking man, not an Uzbek looker, coughing. If you are able to catch it, we hope that this person is not 
infected by the coronavirus and not infecting anyone else. That is because not all Uzbeks look Chinese and not all Chinese look Uzbeks. In fact, Uzbeks are quite the diverse people. Some of them look downright European, while others look downright Chinese, to say the least. And that person who is walking differently and looking differently and dressing differently, who knows, he could have been a 100% Uzbek. But if we were to play the probabilities game, that person was not Uzbek. Itaku Dalie. People in Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan, seem to be out and about and enjoying their lives. As if nothing happened. Well, statistically speaking, in a country of about 30 million, 10 cases are not going to do much. You are going to have to be very, very risky in your lifestyle in order to contract the virus in Uzbekistan at this moment. In addition, it seems that the cases again were quarantined and are in recovery. No deaths. As far as knowledge is concerned, no deaths have been reported. And hopefully the same stays this way, not only for Uzbekistan, but the entire world. Now the weather is getting warmer in Uzbekistan. See that people are dressing more expressively. Maybe this is a sign that the coronavirus will float up and evaporate into the air never come back to this blessed planet that we live on unless the myth is untrue which myth you might be asking well the myth that in heat it is harder for pandemics epidemics and basic thugonomics <laughs> to persevere of course the basic thugonomics addiction was tongue-in-cheek and it is a reference to the blessed wrestler otherwise known as John Cena is this now a good time to come to Tashkent as a tourist? If you would like to make Tashkent your base for travelling throughout Central Asia and the Silk Road. Maybe you want to hop over to the one of the least travelled nations in all of humanity, otherwise known as Turkmenistan. Not exactly. In fact, it is not advisable to go anywhere in the world. Even if your country has zero cases, which is arguable, Midway March 2020, airports are still quite the cesspool for getting infected with the coronavirus. And so it is advisable. You don't come to a country as Uzbekistan right now when it has a virus. And things might close down. There's a report of at least one country with Less than 1,000 cases, however, the whole country seems to be in quarantine. Everybody is treated as if he or she has the virus. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if we were to approach it in a black and white, yes or no approach, we would say, it is a good idea, yes. It is worthwhile to quarantine a country with less than a 1,000 cases. However, it seems like the whole world has taken two weeks off in order to come up with a better way to find the virus and realize what needs to be open and what needs to be closed. And so, some countries that have quarantined completely might need to rethink their approach in terms of more things that might need to be opened, such as maybe a central bank per every geographical territory so that people can still withdraw money, deposit money, and send money abroad with the latter, with the last thing being the most likely important thing that people need to do in such a crisis. If your son is abroad and that son was only given a certain amount of money, you'd like to replenish that person with the money. Your bank needs to enable you to send that money abroad. This is a very dire time that we are in. You have probably outlived the SARS, the MERS, the Ebola, the malaria, the swine flu, the bird flu, but we have not seen anything of this magnitude. And hopefully this is the last time that we see it. That is because, some people say, people got lazy after the SARS epidemic. If we were to call it an epidemic, and they stopped researching and as much, but now the world will be much more prepared. 
so that we do not see a case such as the case that we see in Italy, where things have skyrocketed, and in addition, stop selling those strange looking animals in wet markets in places like China, and consider switching to the blessed, cruelty free, merciful vegan diet, or if you want to go even more merciful, fruitarian, and not only just fruitarian, you only pick up the fruits that have fallen on the floor on their own. And if you have any better diet, everybody should be all ears. Uzbekistan, Tashkent, coronavirus. Hopefully everything will be fine.